What's good? Misfit, Murder Ave Gang, we in the building. Make sure y'all check out my last battle, Fire, Always Bodies. After that, check out Real Fans, Real Talk. Real talk, we is 53 without sports, but the quarantine tour continues. With that being said, I want to give you guys my immediate reaction and feedback on episodes five and six of The Last Dance. If you're not watching it, you're missing out on a great piece of sports and cultural history. Uh, but with that being said, let's jump right into it, man. Um, first things first, uh, man, it was great seeing Kobe on screen, even if it was for a short amount of time. Um, you know, we... Obviously, it's still mourning the loss of Kobe Bryant and with everything that's going on. It it seems like it was, you know, a while ago, but it was only a few months ago that we lost Kobe Bryant um, and his birth. His daughter's birthday recently passed Gianna, who also lost her life in that uh, helicopter crash uh, was just this past week. So to see Kobe on screen and given just a, just a little bit of insight about his relationship with Mike was really good to see, man. And I, I wish Kobe could still be here, not only to to share his thoughts and um, give us some more insight on his relationship with Mike, man. But it was great just to see him um, talking about getting game from Mike and learning how to be a champion from Mike. Uh, I thought that was very special. And that was that was a great personal touch. Um, we, we all know Mike at the wake for Kobe talked about, you know, their relationship and viewed him as a little brother. So it would have been nice to hear Kobe give his insights at this time. Um, but a couple of things I want to jump into, man. Uh, first things first, in regards to the Dream Team. So there was a lot made of Isaiah Thomas being left off the Dream Team over the past week since the last episodes came out. And I was expecting to maybe get a little bit more insight from this documentary on some things that I thought kept Isaiah off the team. And it wasn't just Michael Jordan. I do think Mike had a, a played a, a factor in keeping him off the team. Um, and I can understand why. They had some tough battles. And ultimately, when it was said, all said and done, um, you know, Mike... And the Bulls, uh, as a team and organization, felt disrespected by what the Pistons did when they walked off the court. But there are some key factors that I think played into him not being on the team. And it wasn't just his relationship with Mike. In the documentary, they talk about, you know, um, the the physicality and the, the battles that they had with the Celtics and also with the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. But I think it was deeper than that. He had made some comments that were racially insensitive uh, towards Larry Bird during their rivalry where he came out and said, hey, look, if, if Larry Bird wasn't white, you guys wouldn't be thinking he's so great on the court, which was very unfair at the time. Um, and even looking back on it now, you know, it was inappropriate to say because Larry Bird uh, really held himself uh, or carried himself, I should say, with a lot of dignity and he played the game the right way. And we ultimately know Larry Bird is a true legend on and off the court. Um, but then also, and... Um, and probably a, a deeper blow to uh, his opportunity to be on the Dream Team was his relationship with Magic Johnson. For those of you that may not remember or maybe were too young to understand at the time, uh, Isaiah Thomas um, had publicly um, kind of questioned Magic Johnson's sexuality. Um, and this was right around the time Magic uh, was diagnosed with HIV. And that really put a, a big frost on their relationship, which they were, they just became good friends again over the last few years during an uh, NBA TV interview. And I think those two factors, along with his issues with Michael Jordan, kept him off the, the team. Um, I don't think there was one in particular guy who stood up and said, I'm not going to play if Isaiah's on the team. But I think that when you factor in his beefs with Michael Jordan, his beefs with Larry Bird, his beef with Magic Johnson, again, those were three of the most influential athletes and players in the NBA over the last 40 years, you know, you, you're not going to overcome that to make the team point blank period. And I do believe Isaiah deserves to be on the team. I think if you, if you ask me, should Isaiah be on the team over John Stockton? I would have said yes. Um, but I also understand why he was left off the team. Those guys just didn't mesh with him and they didn't feel comfortable with him being on the team. And I, that's my personal beliefs, why he was left off the team. But I'll let you guys draw your own conclusions on that. Um, the next part of the documentary that I thought was was very fascinating was the media may have, in the media's just desire to create storylines and to kind of uh, magnify small things, may have robbed us of possibly the greatest run in NBA history. 
when the Bulls won their three P and it was highlighted, you know, the media coverage over Mike's gambling, um, the media trying to pick holes at the armor of Michael Jordan and, and the aura around Michael Jordan. Um, but what was left out on the documentary was when the Bulls were on their run for the three P, up until that point, it had been almost thirty years since the last team had ever three peated. And we're talking about the sixties Celtics with Bill Russell. So it was not only a major story just in the basketball world, but in sports as a whole, because the Bulls were looking to do something that hadn't been done in 30 plus years. And so the Bulls win the three-peat, but obviously Mike is drained just from the journey of winning three championships, being a part of the Olympic team, and obviously all the deep playoff runs even before the championship started. And then to have the media kind of uh, turn on him, uh, I think ultimately cost us of what might have been the greatest uh, sports run we had ever seen. Now, I'm not guaranteeing the Bulls would have come back in one in 94. As they highlighted, uh, 93, it was tough getting by the New York Knicks. Um, the New York Knicks were the team that ended up going to the finals in 94. Um, the Houston Rockets were very good in 94 and 95 with Hakeem Olajuwon, Sam Cassell. They added Clyde Drexler. So there were some formidable opponents um, in that year and a half that Mike was away from the game. But I think if the media hadn't turned on Mike the way they did, if things didn't sour, um, Mike may have been more inclined to come back. Now, I know his father's passing also played a big part in his decision as well. But I think the combination of the media picking at his, um, you know, his, his persona, um, those in the media trying to find flaws in Michael Jordan, whether it, whether it was his political views, whether it was his, uh, you know, gambling habits or, or just the way he went about his, his life away from the court, combined with the death of his father is what ultimately, ultimately made Mike feel like, you know what, I no longer want this. And we've heard reports about how happy he was playing minor league baseball because he was just, quote unquote, one of the guys. He was away from all of the limelight. He was no longer being picked at or, you know, dissected by the media. If we don't see that happen in that 92-93 season, I wonder uh, if Mike not only comes back, but if we would have possibly seen a four-peat, which had never been done and obviously to this day has never been done. But ultimately, um, I think the media's just persistent desire to find an angle, find a headline, find a story is what probably robbed us of, you know, a year and a half of Michael Jordan and possibly enhancing what it already looks like one of the best NBA dynasties ever. You know, we'll never know, man. But until next week, it's Legend in Two Games. Hope you guys keep tuning in. And I got some more sports blogs and debates coming for you guys this week, man. Stay Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real